Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time. This week's topic is something unique. This week's topic is the five stocks you need to be watching right now. Over the next couple days, over the next week, over the next month, these five stocks are what you want to be looking at, especially if you're a swing trader or a core trader. And to be honest, there's more than five. There's actually about seven of them, um, but there's five of them that I think are really good and you definitely wanna watch those stocks. So we're gonna go over those today, guys, in just a couple minutes. But before I get into that, I just wanted to take a little moment and say hi and talk to all the pansies out there. All of you out there, last week I did a video when I was flying back from Florida and there was a lot of ambient background noise in the airplane and some of you guys complained. So let's take a look on the screen of complaint here, complaint here, complaint here, complaint here, complaint here. If you can't deal with a little background noise to learn something valuable on how you can be better at trading, then you're never gonna make it. Just complaining, 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 yapping and complaining. It's sad, but I guess that's the society we live in. We live in a marshmallow society. Everybody's just so soft. They just can't handle much, all right? So if you don't like it, then you didn't like the background noise, watch it, all right? So hopefully, the people that watched it, and I understand it was a little bit annoying, but sometimes we have to go through a little bit of annoyance to get to the good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's lecture. So without further ado, we're going to get into this week's top five stocks to watch for July. And as always, smash that like button if you like this video, crush the subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's topic is a little bit different. This week's topic is the top five stocks to watch right now. Um, that's a little bit disingenuous because there's actually more than five in here, um, but a couple of them have a few issues and we're gonna talk about those issues, all right? So the top five stocks to watch right now. Um, and this doesn't mean that, that you can't find other stocks out there to trade, um, but this is more applicable to swing trading because most of these charts are on daily weekly time frames there are a couple monthly charts we're going to look at but most of them are on daily and weekly time frames uh, because there's been a lot of interest in swing and core trading lately uh, in these markets however before we get to that we first have to get to when will the insanity stop okay um, it's kind of a weekly staple and i just want to reiterate i think i reiterate this every single week this is not to call people out and make people look bad. If it was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blur out their names. I would put their names front and center. Um, but what it is for is to remind you every single week how you can't take one second off in this business when it comes to money management, trade management, and risk control. You can't take a single second off. That stuff is too important to make a mistake on. Okay, and that's why I do these because I want it to be front and center for you guys to see what other people are actually doing so that you guys won't make those mistakes. And sometimes we need to be told 5, 10, 20, 30 times. Anybody that has children out there, particularly teenage kids, knows what I'm talking about. Okay, you need to be reminded of these things. So learn through and from other people's mistakes so that this doesn't happen to you. This week we have two. One, not terrible. The other one, not so good either. All right, this particular person said, I'm a newbie, took a hard lesson, all right, of pigs being slaughtered. Sometimes thinking becomes a new experience. Well, common sense is a new experience also, okay? Sold naked puts, guys. I do not trade options, but anytime you do sell something naked, you better be prepared to own that stock, all right? You better be prepared. Well, this particular person lost $5,000, $5,000 $5, on a $25,000 account on one trade. That's 20% of your account on one trade. Now, is this a devastating loss that you can't bounce back from? No, it's not. But it should be a pretty hard lesson that you, one, why would you even be in the position to be risking that kind of money as a newbie? It goes to show this person really lacks money management, okay? Um, it, again, 
just learn your lesson. Come in $10 risk. In fact, I just answered a question on stock twits not but 30 minutes ago where somebody was, and I, and I don't like doing this to people. They're like, Jared, thank you so much. I appreciate everything you do so much. I just took $1,000 and I'm up to 1700 now in three days. I'm brand new at trading, but I just made $700 in three days and I had to hammer them. So well, you're clearly not listening to this, Jared. It must be a different Jared because there's no way you could have listened to my advice and still made $700 in three days from a $1,000 account being a brand new trader. That's a 70% return in three days as a brand new trader, right? So my point is, is please pay attention. Money management's very, very important. And this person goes on to say, I still trade naked puts on stocks I want to own. Wow. And they admit they're a newbie. Okay. You know, it's their money, but I want you guys to learn from this experience. This particular person lost $11,100 in three months. How? By not using a stop loss. All right. I mean, it's, it's, I don't even have the words at times for the things that people do. But since last March, I managed to blow $11,100, including the $2,400 of XRP that I closed manually. So losing all of it in panic, trying to recover $200 of that to help me extend a stop loss. So basically, guys, what is this? This is an example of what many of you have done. I have done it before on a small scale. I tried to save $100 and ended up losing $1,100. This That's a true story when I first started trading. Okay. Why? Penny wise and dollar foolish. You're like, well, I, I just can't take the loss right now. Let me get but just a little bit more of it back. Right? I just want to, in this case, I want to try to recover $200 and that $200 ends up turning into a massive loss. Stupidity. Just take the lick and it's, it's mostly ego and the need to be right. Just take the loss. Go for a walk. Do something fun. Forget about it. Learn from it. This stuff happens and it's happening right now as we're even talking about it. Somebody out there, maybe a stock went below their threshold or below their, their stop loss area. And they're like, you know, it's going to bounce back. It just left the bottoming tail. The market's changing direction. I'm going to give it just a little more room. And then just a little more room becomes a lot more room. And then a lot more room becomes hopium. And you start just hoping it's going to come back. And you never, ever want to be in that position. Okay, you never want to be. Somebody is asking me a question. Are stop losses manually manipulated? One, a broker cannot touch your stop loss. So when you say manually manipulated, no. The stop loss is where you place it. End of discussion. Okay, it's set by you. And no, brokers and HFTs are not stop hunting you. They know areas where there might be traders down there, but they're not stop hunting you. And even if they did, playing the victim is not going to help you. All right, get back in the trade if you get shaken out of it and it leaves a huge bottoming. That's what we have the 84% rule for. I did a video, I did a lecture on that as well. All right, so let's dig in. We're gonna go one thing before we dig into the top five stocks. Why? Because I'm just being obnoxious at this point, proving my point, but still helping you in the meantime. Three bar plays happen every single day. And no, they don't only happen in hindsight, like you, some people out there want to suggest, Jim, okay? They don't. They happen every single day. In fact, I can't remember a day that went by where I didn't see a three-bar play. Does that mean we take every three-bar play? No, because not every three-bar play is equal, and we're going to find that out here today. So yesterday, these all five of these trades you're going to see, all five of them, yes, five, happened yesterday. Okay, yesterday. So here is a two minute four bar play that we took on XLNX yesterday, called in the chat room, and I took it myself, right? There it is on the favorites list Xilinx over $97, three minutes before the market opens. 10 minutes later at 9 37, we called Xilinx 9685 by 96, and there it is, right? Four bar play, wide range bar, narrow bar, narrow bar rip, and this stock ended up going above 98 bucks. Um, actually, sorry, 99 bucks. I apologize. So it ended up going over $2. Um, you would have had about a dollar 70 ish on your target, something like that. Uh, if you were looking for two to one, okay, this happened yesterday on Xilinx and you can see the notations called in the chat room. I won't spend that much time on these, but for those of you also, and, and I had this conversation with the chat room earlier today, Please, please, please take a picture of a perfect pattern, a pattern you would like to emulate, a pattern you would like to trade and put it on your wall, blow it up, poster size it. And every time you go to take a trade, 
take a look at the picture before you take the trade. Go, does this trade on my broker, on my charts, on my screen look the same as the perfect pattern on my wall? And if it doesn't, don't take it. Pilots and checklists, you're supposed to have a checklist before you take off on an aircraft. Well, you're supposed to have a checklist before you take a trade, right? Those are the rules in which you live by. It's those rules that keep you safe combined with proper money management, okay? So when you look at this, this is a really good four bar play. So this would make almost the entire checklist of, of positive things you wanna see. Next, Lulu Lemon yesterday. This is one I did not take. Wide bar, narrow bar, absolute rip, all right? Mentioned it in the chat room. Several folks in the chat room took it. We mentioned it beforehand. I actually got caught up in a different trade and I missed it. So this was a lack of focus why I missed Lulu, but it's a perfect three bar play. Wide bar, narrow bar, blast off. 310 by 307.20 and it went up to like 317 or 318 or something of that area two to three to one on your money. It was also on the long watch list yesterday. Okay, and again, I know some folks took it, um, but this was just, again, a lack of focus. And that brings me back to my point. We have watch lists, we have checklists, we do all that so we don't lose focus, all right? We can't. At the end of the day, it's a business. You're here to make money. So turn off the TV, lock the kids out of the room, don't leave the dog or the cat on your keyboard. Focus, especially in the first 30 to 60 minutes of the day. Focus, focus, focus. But that is a perfect two minute three bar play from yesterday. Let's continue. Now, I'm putting all of these in here because I took this yesterday also. Here it is BYND at 934, 135, 40 by 134, 50. Why am I bringing this up? Because this is not, this is not a perfect three bar play, but I took it. Okay. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, why isn't this a perfect three bar play? Well, Look at yesterday, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars up. Now, are these wide range bars? No, they're not, but there's enough of them with today's wide range bar to be very concerned. So this stock closed really strong, but somewhat extended strong, right? It popped up about two bucks in the last 10 minutes of the day. This is only a two minute chart. And then it gapped up and then put in a really wide range bar. Now. If this bar was not quite as wide, maybe to 134, it wouldn't have been so bad. And in fairness, this stock did go 1R, right? We had a 90 cent stop loss and it went, I think, $1.10 maybe, $1.20, something like that. So I didn't get hurt on it. I actually made some money on it, but you can see it failed. So if you were shooting for a bigger target, this was not a good three bar play to take because it was too extended when we took it. I'm showing this to you because it looks like a really good three bar play till you start looking at the average trading range, the previous bars from yesterday, all of those things. I made a mistake in taking this. I didn't get hurt for my mistake because it went one R, but what if it didn't? What if it went 0.7 R and then stopped? I would have taken a loss on this, okay? So this is an example yesterday of one that appears to be a three bar play and is, but it's not a good one. It's not a good one, okay? Here's another one from yesterday. I did not take this one, MRNA. Somebody in the chat room mentioned this kind of as it was triggering, all right? They got it, I didn't get it. But look at this wide range bar on the 15 minute chart, taking out the prior pivot high right here. And note the smooth move down from $67. It's like a waterfall, right? Well, now you should have a smooth move back up to $67. Okay, so wide range bar, narrow range bar, blast off. All right, so this thing went from 63.30 to just over 65 bucks, about $1.70 on about an 80 cent stop loss, a little less, I think it was 75 cents. So it went two to one. Textbook, note it's not extended when it's triggering. It's actually triggering out of a buy setup. It just happens to be the next day. Note, it's a stock that put in a triple bottom at $59. It's breaking above this yellow line. That's the resistance point. That's your target up here. If you're doing two to one, then you just get out at two to one. But this is on a 15 minute time frame. It triggered around 10 a.m. For those who go, do all your three bar plays happen off the open? No, they don't, okay? And last but not least is one that Unmall called. I didn't actually call this yesterday, Unmall did, okay? This is a trade on eBay. 
Now note the wide range bar takes out, I should have put the yellow line here, it takes out that area right here of like 51.25. Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. 51.73 by 51.53, 20 cent stop. Unmall's entry was very similar, it was a few pennies off of that, but note he had it as his first watch idea pre-market, right? 21 minutes before the market opened. 9.42 is when he mentioned it, and it triggered at like 9.43, 9.44, something like that, and it was relatively painless, right? And this, I didn't even call this one, Unmall did, but it was in the chat room as well. So there's five. We had what, a two minute one, a 15 minute one, a five minute one, I mean, all different time frames on these three bar plays. Okay, all different time frames. Some triggered early in the morning, some triggered in the mid at 9:45, some triggered at 10 o'clock, etc. They happen every single day, and we take them and call them before they happen every single day. I just put these in for shits and giggles for the you out people that out there that just think maybe I'm fibbing or something. There is my BYND entry. There is my XL and XN. These these boxes are the same. It's just I blew it up. I put the whole line in so you could see. The stop, stop limit area, the order number, the order count number, the originator, blah, blah, blah. And there it is blown up. Okay. There they are. And you can see that I mentioned them to the general public as well long before they happened. All right. So three bar plays happen every day. It's just a matter of you scanning to find them. That's it. End of discussion. It's just a matter of you finding them. If you don't scan, you're not going to find them. If you scan, you will find them. Most of those came from the morning watch list all right i want to be clear about that almost every one of those ideas i'll bring this chart up for a second so you can see i'll give it one second all right there it is do you see this here long watches xlnx carv mu shopify lulu cag guys i traded xlnx on the watch list i traded bynd on the watch list lulu we talked about and mentioned on the watch list so you guys scanning in the pre-market, creating and developing a watch list is the most important part of your day. Because without the watch list, you're not going to take any trades. Or if you do, you're probably going to miss them because you're seeing them just as they happen. I, I get questions all the time from people saying, well, how do you find them? I scan my gap list in the pre-market. You see, this is 8.55 in the morning. It's 35 minutes before the market ever opened. And then I put these watch list ideas on a thumbnail, which is basically small charts. So I have XLNX, CARV, MU Shop, Lulu, CAG, BY, et cetera, on a, one monitor. They just take up the entire monitor, one chart each. That's it, one chart each. And I just stare at it and I just wait. And I wait and I wait. Sometimes you wait one minute, sometimes you wait 20 minutes, sometimes you wait an hour. But I guarantee you, Every single day, one of those ideas that comes from your watch list will give you a three bar play, a buy setup, a breakout, something every single day. Why? Because I almost never go through a day without taking a trade. That's how I know this, okay? So my point simply is these patterns don't actually happen at 9.35 or 9.40. They happen pre-market. What I mean is they happen when you build your watch list. I don't know which one of these stocks is going to give me the perfect three bar play, but I know these are my favorite ideas based off of the gap. Got it? All right. So now let's talk about swing trading stocks to watch. All right. Some of these are better than others. So we're going to kind of go through them together. All right. We're going to go through them together. And to be honest with you, I actually haven't checked the prices today. I probably should have checked the prices on these before I, I got on the mic today, but oh, well, okay. Oh, well. First one is IC, I-S-E-E, -E, I-S-E-E, -E, all right? This is a daily buy setup. Again, I don't know if these have triggered. I probably should have checked that before I got on the mic. But this is a stock that's trying to come back up, right? So it gapped up, put in a really wide range green bar. This is on a daily time frame, by the way. It says daily chart right there, okay? And it's pulling back lower high, lower high, lower high. Now, if you take the top where this resistance yellow line is. And if you take the bottom of the pivot down here at like, I don't know, 375, we are where? Pretty much right in the middle. Where are we at? We are on a 50% retracement. We are at minor price support or level two, sorry, yeah, level two price support, okay? So think about it. 
We have a 50% retracement, level two price support. If you use moving averages, I don't, but if you use them, I guarantee you the daily 20 period is probably sitting right there, okay, right there. So the entry on this will be $5.40 with a stop loss at $4.70. And your first target area will be right around 690, 680, 690. Okay, right there. So that is the parameters. It left the bottoming tail yesterday. It looks like it's at $4.90, give or take right now. So it has not triggered the $5.40 area. Your first target will be around $6.80 or $6.90. Your second target will be around $7.50. And your third target will be around $9. Okay. This is a really, really nice buy setup. Okay. 50% retracement near a rising moving average if there were one on here. Okay. Sitting at minor price support with room to go higher, at least two to one to your first target probably three to one to your second target and about five or six to one to your third target. Okay. So I would keep an eye on I S E E in the coming days. Keep in mind, it is important. We have a holiday coming up on Friday. The market is closed. So be careful. Long weekends tend to be challenging for swing trades if you take them right before the long weekend, but keep an eye on this. All right. Um, now I'm going to go over a few more of these, but how did I find this? As I find them the same way I find everything. I scan dollar gainers and dollar losers. We went over this in a lecture a few weeks, maybe a month ago, how we find swing trades. I put up Finviz for you guys. You can use TC2000. You can use trade ideas. You can use the current platform that you have. Gap up runners, dollar gainers, percentage gainers, dollar losers. Up to you. Any one of those scans will find these ideas. You just have to scan for them. You have to scan for them. Scan once or twice a week for your swing trades, and you should be able to come up with at least 10 or 20 out of a list of 500 to 1,000. It's going to take some work. It doesn't take that long, but it's going to take some work. Okay. Yep. Some people like Finviz. Most of those ones I mentioned, TC2000, Finviz, trade ideas, they're customizable. So you can eliminate certain price ranges that you don't like. If you don't want to trade $1,000 stocks, then Make your maximum $999. If you don't like to trade stocks below $5, eliminate those. And you can customize it and it'll spit out ideas. But you still have to what? Review those ideas because it comes up with a lot of junk also. All right? Comes up with a lot of junk. So ISEE, really nice idea. Keep an eye on it. You, now you have the, the levels and thresholds. Next, AYX on the weekly chart. AYX on a weekly chart. Okay. Note wide range green bar followed by a narrow range red bar. I should say narrow body and narrow range red bar with a bottoming tail. Um, and then this bar right here is this week's bar. Today is Wednesday. So this bar is two or three days old. Um, so AYX is already at 172, it looks like. Well, that already triggered. <laughs> but anyway, 168.60 would be the entry, 156.50. Um, and here's the thing, and this is important. Trade management here to the left, it's at an all-time high. So the target will need to be either all or nothing. That means set a target, say two to one, three to one, okay, whatever that is, and get out there. Or pivot trail stop it or bar by bar trail stop it. That's what it means, okay? So it's an all-time high. So when you look to the left, there are no targets here. There's nothing to the left of this because it's an all-time high, all right? So make sure anytime you have a stock that's an all-time high, either use an all-or-nothing approach, pivot, or bar by bar because there's no reference to the left. So wide bar, narrow bar, narrow bar, blast off. And it looks like this one might already be triggering from what somebody is saying, all right? The concern here, if there is a concern, is that the stock moved up from 80 to 160. Yes, it has a pullback here. And yes, it has a pullback here. Probably a good enough resting period on both of these pullbacks. But it is a little bit extended, right? It is a little bit extended on AYX. Next, BIG. Now note, I put this on multiple time frames. You should always be scanning multiple time frames, right? We talk about scanning multiple time frames for intraday trades. You should do the same thing for swing trades. Okay, so BIG, we're starting out with the daily chart. We had a gap up on Friday, I believe that was, a big gap up, but that gap up took out that prior pivot. That's a good thing. Then the next day, which was Monday, it had a narrow range bar. Next day, Tuesday, narrow range bar, and it looks like it's at like 41.60 right now, something like that. 
So the entry would be over 45 bucks, and the stop loss would be around 4150. If it pulls a little below 4150 today or something, that's not a huge deal. All right, but here is the rub. Yes, we had a pullback right here. See this pullback from early June to the end of June? That's fine. That's a good resting period. But we're going to need to use the weekly chart to find out where our target would be. Okay? The concern here, if there is one, is it did move up quite a bit. But the positive, the positive here is if you drew a trend line here, guys, right? In fact, let me just take this line. Let's just do it in real time. Let me take this line. That would be your trend line right about there. We broke above that trend line, didn't we? Right? We broke above the trend line. We put in a higher pivot high and a higher pivot low. So you can see the stock was clearly lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows in a downtrend. We broke above this over the past month and a half, okay, two months, whatever it's been. And now we're looking and poised to go higher. This wide range bar, which is part of this gap, has broken above the prior pivot and above this little consolidation. So our first target on this, let me pull this back up, okay? Our first target on this is 50 bucks. Sorry, guys, just trying to adjust that. All right. So if you get in at 45 with a stop at 41.50, that's a $3.50 stop loss. First target is 50, which is $5. That's only about 1.6, 1 1.7 to 1. That's what you're going to have to deal with on this because that is the first target. Second target is different. There's a lot more room to get up to about the $65 area. So Big picture, you have about 20 bucks to play with on a three to four dollar stop loss. Okay, but this is a daily kind of three, four bar play that's forming. I don't mind if this sits here for three or four more days, as long as it stays above that $41 area, kind of between 41 and 45, stay in that range. The more it rests, that's okay, guys. Because then if it rests today and tomorrow, guess what you have on Monday? A weekly three bar play. So instead of having like a daily four bar play or a daily wedge or a flag on Monday, you'll simply have what? A weekly three bar play. So you really can't lose if this thing consolidates today or tomorrow. It gets better the more it consolidates. OK, so this is one I would definitely keep an eye on over the next week or so. All right. Next. This is LLY Eli Lilly on the weekly time frame. All right, on the weekly time frame. Now, yes, there is a little bit of a peekaboo topping tail here. All right, there is. But we have a wide range green bar taking out what? Red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar. Taking out, I don't know, the last one and a half, two months of this stock. Okay, breaking above that yellow line right there. That's good. You're breaking above resistance. Narrow range resting bar. Okay, and then this tiny little bar right here is this week. All right, and the current price, thank you, HJ, is 163.45. You're right in the middle of the range. So the entry on this would be 167.40. Probably won't trigger till next week, Monday-ish. Probably, we can't guarantee that, but probably. And you have a bit of a wide stop. You have about a 7 or $8 stop loss here, okay, an $8 stop loss. So you're going to need a decent move. My point in saying that to you is with an $8 stop loss, this is going to be more of a core trade. You're going to be riding this for a couple months. This isn't going to be something you're going to be out of in five or 10 days. All right. And as the last stock we talked about, this is an all time high at 167.40, which means there is nothing to the left, which means there's no target reference point. So you have to use all or nothing management. It might be two to one, three to one, whatever, or pivot or bar by bar once it triggers. Okay. Um, now, note, I am using potentially using because it hasn't triggered the entry bar is a stop loss why because if i use bar number two the risk to reward is damaged it'll be like a 15 dollar stop loss maybe 12 or 13 dollar stop loss and i think the risk to reward gets hurt uh, if you use that wide of a stop loss so in my opinion you should use the entry bar in this case which would be 160 ish and i just gave it a little extra room there all right so again weekly core trade idea for the next coming one to three one to three months probably Okay, next is ZGNX. You didn't think I'd only have long ideas, did you? We have to prepare for all sides of the market. We're near all time highs in the market. It's challenging to go long. It is, it's challenging to go long. All right, I mean, we live in a crazy world, guys. We live in a world 
where Tesla is the most valuable car company on the planet, more than Toyota. Tesla sells 300,000 units a year. Toyota sells 10 million, and they're worth $200 billion. For what? Nobody knows. We live in a world where, what is that, NKLA? NKL, is that it? NKLA is worth, what, 20 to $50 billion? And they haven't even produced a road-going vehicle yet. That's the world we live in. OK, so my point is, is I want long ideas just in case the insanity continues and the market goes to a new, 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 new all time high. But I also want to be prepared for the opposite side, which is short ideas. OK, ZGNX is at twenty nine forty five. So it's actually moving up. It might invalidate this, but I think it's still something you want to watch. Why? What is so important about ZGNX or what do I like so much? Well, this stock gapped up. You See this red bar right here? See the red bar? It gapped up to a perfect area. I mean, that's a really good gap up. It's the kind of gap where you kind of salivate over and go, wow, this thing is definitely going back to 55 bucks. But it completely failed on massive volume. Not, I mean, this stock was doing less than a million shares a day. And then this day it does 11 or 12 million and comes all the way down. And instead of breaking prior pivot highs and going higher, it completely rolled over and went lower. Now, yes, it's at 29.50 or 29.40. That's certainly going to put a little bit of a damper on this idea. But if it leaves a topping tail and comes back down to 25, 24.50, I'm interested in it, right? I'm interested in it. Why? Because anytime you can have a failure that nasty, there's a, clearly a lot of sellers in here, all right? Target one will be down here around the $22 area, give or take. Um, target two will be down in the 16 to 17 dollar area right now it's a four bar play but that might get messed up by where it's at today right today it's at 29.50 or something like that but this is something you want to keep an eye on if the market pulls in now to be mindful because it is important i believe and somebody can correct me if i'm wrong i believe this is a biotech related pharmaceutical biotech stock zgnx and if i'm wrong i'm wrong these stocks are challenging in this environment with COVID-19 and a lot of research going on and everyone trying to push things to market, as a general comment, be careful trading biotech um, stocks, pharmaceutical stocks. It's always dangerous trading those, but in this environment, it's especially dangerous. One day they're a hero because they're, you know, they got FDA approval, and then the next day the FDA rescinds it or whatever BS happens, and it tanks. So just be careful trading those types of stocks, okay? Next is... I-N-C-I, INCI, I-N-C-I. I -I. I have the daily chart and the monthly chart, both the daily and the monthly. We skipped the time frame here. So note, daily chart here. This stock, if we're being honest, looked like what? It looked like a double top retest and failure, possible stage three into a stage four, right? So we have the stage two uptrend. Pull back because we get a little climax. We chop, chop, chop. We double top. We break the support area and we go, oh, this is the beginning of a stage four if we break $90, right? That's what you're thinking. This is the beginning of a stage four if we break 90 bucks. But no, it rips back up, takes out the double top. Very, very potent to take out the double top to the left. Pulls back on about a 30 to 40% retracement. Leaves a doji bar bottoming tail, another consolidation green bar. Today, it's trading around 102.50, 102.30, give or take. Thank you, HJ. Um, 104.15 would be the entry just below 100. I know it says 100, but like 99.75, somewhere below $100. The first target's 110. So you have about just under $6 to your first target. The problem with that is it's only about one and a half to one. Right, one and a half to one to your first target. It's kind of mediocre, but it's okay because the second target is pretty damn big, 140. And that's why I have the monthly chart on here. The monthly chart is on here because $140 is about a $36 target on a $4 stop. That's a nine to one risk to reward. But it might take a while, obviously, to get back to 140. But I like the shallow, not super shallow. I mean, it's not a 20% retracement. If you look at the top at 110, the bottom at 90, the perfect retracement is $100, right? And we're very close to that $100 mark. That would be 50%. So we're close enough to the 40 to 50% retracement level, just below some support here, but not too far below it, right? And I think this thing looks good back to 110. I mean, this is a nice daily buy setup. 
all right, with a monthly target. So you might be in this for a little while. You might hit that first target and the back target might take a little bit longer, okay? Next idea is L-I-V-N on a weekly chart. L-I-V-N on a weekly chart. So note, this stock is in a stage two uptrend, double topped right here, pulls back stage four, gets hammered again, chops around, looks like it might try to bounce and then it loses its you-know-what, right? Gets hammered under 60 bucks, and not under 60, but it breaks under 40. Because there's nothing below this stock, right? There's nothing below this stock after this area of 35 bucks, give or take. Nothing. Zero is the next area for this. So what I like about it is this. This thing bounced back up to minor price resistance right here. See the $60 area? We broke the low, bounced back up, and we left a massive topping tail. Massive. You have a sell setup here. Well, we missed the sell setup. That was weeks ago, a couple months ago. It drops, retests this area, puts in a lower high retest. That's bearish. Topping tail, bearish. Failing at minor resistance, bearish. Retesting this prior pivot, over here to the left, but putting in a lower eye, bearish. Wide range red bar, taking out these three green bars, bearish. And it's just hanging out right here. So this stock is currently trading at around 49.18. Thank you, HJ. All right, the entry would be 45.60 and the stop loss would be around 50. If you wanna give it a wider stop, that's fine. But the risk reward could be damaged by doing so. All right, so again, if you wanna use like $52 as your stop above the topping tail, that's fine. Because as, as wide as it appears at $4.40, it's actually a tight stop loss for this thing. It's a tight stop loss. You are trading this on a weekly. So we basically have a weekly four bar play here, assuming it triggers. Okay. And we have room down to, I think it's like $33 or $35. Um, so your first target is at least two to three to one. And then after that area of 33 to 35 bucks target, when there's nothing below, zero is your next target. You could be riding this all the way down to 10 bucks. Okay, remember, after target one is reached, there is nothing below. So target two would be bar by bar or a pivot trailed out. Okay, and then the last idea I have for you guys today. BMRN on the weekly. BMRN on the weekly, and we're looking at the monthly. Now, this one is not perfect. Okay, this is where vacuum trading can get you in trouble. All right. So this is a cautionary swing trade. I'll repeat, a cautionary swing trade. So what do we have? Wide range bar, narrow range bar, and this week currently narrow range bar. Stock is trading at 124-ish, thank you HJ. But here's the thing, if you trade in a vacuum, you look at this and go, ooh, it's a wide bar followed by a narrow bar, and it has room to go higher, okay? And it has room to go higher. Somebody's making a comment. These are all long ideas. We just got done talking about two short ideas. The last two ideas were short ideas. Pay attention. All right. Pay attention. The last two ideas were short ideas. Don't sorry me. Just pay attention. Okay. My goodness gracious. Um, wide range bar followed by a narrow range bar. Room to go higher. But that's what happens when you trade in a vacuum. So notice if we go up to the monthly chart, what do we have? Wide range green bar, wide range green bar, wide range green bar. So this stock has gone from 80 to 122, straight up. So for me, even though I'm putting this as an idea, I wouldn't likely swing or core trade this, okay? This is something I might consider as a lower time frame scalp over 125. Meaning, I might look at this as a five or a 15 or a 60 minute intraday trade. Because I do like the three bar play on a weekly, but it's really hard to sit into a core trade because when you hit the weekly time frame, you're between a swing and a core trade. When you look at a monthly chart that looks like that, right? When you look at a monthly chart that looks like that, whew, that's tough. Right? That's really tough. So this is a cautionary tale. I'm trying to teach why I'm showing you this in the sense that a lot of you would look at the weekly and not look at any other time frame. You go, oh, it looks great on the weekly. I'm done. I'll take it at 125. Once you look at the monthly, you probably don't want to take this as a core trade. 
again, if you want to drill down to maybe a 60 minute or a 15 minute and try to, you know, maybe get a couple bucks out of it on an intraday trade. I'm, pr I'm probably okay with that, but I wouldn't marry this thing to try to get it back to 150 or 160. Now, it is a biotech stock, BMRN, so it could do crazy stuff, meaning it might defy logic and go back to 150. It might. Maybe they cure cancer tomorrow. I don't know. But the odds are against it considering how extended it is. Okay? So my purpose, guys, in doing this was, one, to show you that there's always opportunity out there. You just have to scan for it. There's never a time you can't find something. There's always a time. But it's also to show you what a really good swing trade looks like versus a mediocre swing trade like this one right here. This is a cautionary trade, and we had two of these in there. Remember, we went back to, where the heck was it? Was it this one? Uh, nope, it wasn't that one. It wasn't that one. I don't remember which one it was. I don't know. But there was another one in here that was a little bit of a cautionary tale as well. Be careful. Maybe it was this AXY. Okay, this stock is up quite a bit. Probably goes higher, but be careful. But on the flip side, you also have beautiful charts like ISEE, -E. beautiful pullback, plenty of room to go higher, okay? I also tried to mix some lower price stocks in with higher price stocks. There's a lot of whiners out there who say, why do you only pick high price stocks? I don't. I just pick the stocks that, that show me a pattern. That's it. I, I'm not discriminatory to the price of a stock. I just pick the ones that show patterns. Okay, sometimes they're lower price, sometimes they're higher price, and that shouldn't be a motivating factor in what you trade. It really shouldn't be because if you have a really small account, then likely you shouldn't be risking very much money to begin with because you have a small account, which means by definition, you're not that good or else you wouldn't have a small account. It's not being rude. It's just telling you the truth. Okay. So if you're new, risk control, risk management. And to wrap it all up, to repeat a slide from last week, there is no holy grail, guys. It's about self-management, money management, personal management. There's plenty of ways to manage a trade, all or nothing, bar by bar, moving averages, pivots, hybrid approach, etc. Okay, the key here, whether it's an intraday, one minute, two minute trade, or a core monthly, yearly trade, know yourself. Focus on what works for you. Know yourself. Don't let others push you into a box or a singular mold. Okay, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but the job for you is to learn proper, right? Learn proper technique and then figure out your niche, your niche, however you say that, right? That's your goal. When you can figure out yourself, that's when you'll start seeing really impressive results. Too many people are trying to be somebody else in trading, right? Seriously, they're trying to be somebody else. It's not that you can't learn from others. You can. That's how we all learn from other people. But understand yourself. So for example, I'll see a trader and I'll go, wow, that's a really good pattern, but that management doesn't jive with me, right? Oh man, that person shoots for 5R targets or 10R targets or does daily pivot management. I can't do that, but I do like the idea they put out there, right? So figure out what works for you. And the only way you're going to know what works for you is trying it, okay? And you just have to be flexible. I went through the, my first 6 to 12 months of trading trying to manage on pivots, it's not me. It's still not me to this day. 15 years later, I just can't manage on pivots. I'm just not good at it. I don't have the patience for it. I got the patterns, but I had to figure out the management. I forced it upon myself because I thought that's the way. That's the way. This person's doing really well. I need to copy them. You don't. Figure out what works best for you. Okay. And of course, always understand your expectation before you take a trade. Guys, you cannot get monster targets on two-minute charts. Guys, you can't take a weekly trade and expect not to have some wiggle room or a pullback. If you don't like pullbacks, don't take daily, weekly, and, and monthly trades because they're all going to pull back at some point. It's rare a stock just triggers and rips up to your target. Know your expectation. If you understand the expectation, you won't be upset when it happens. It's when you don't have the expectation and something outside of the expectation happens that you don't know what to do with yourself. Get it? So know the expectation and have a trading plan that accounts for and has rules for all of those scenarios. Okay? I don't think it's a good idea for new traders just to get out of trades when they think it's going against them. Most of the time, your plan will end up beating you. All right? So it's a little bit of a shorter lecture today. I hope you guys learned a little bit 
about swing and core trading, or at least some upcoming ideas that you can keep an eye on. I'm pretty sure most of those ideas have not triggered. There might be one or two that have already triggered. Um, so take a look at them. If you like them, if you're a swing trader or core trader, maybe you can apply your own management strategy to those ideas. All right, so that'll do it for this week's lecture. I'm Jared Wesley. We'll get back at it again next week. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.